Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Norton Man Reviews, where we come to the grand finale of the Onslaught storyline with the Onslaught Marvel Universe mega douche issue. Um, so, how did we get here? What brought us here? So, quick recap. I mean, if you've been watching the videos, you know. If you read the comics, you know. But, you know, just in case. Um... Onslaught was a big threat for X-Men. He was uh, being hinted at through X-Men issues for um, several months until it was finally revealed that Professor Xavier was Onslaught or Onslaught manifested from Professor Xavier. That was also um, the reveal of the X-Men traitor that Bishop had been talking about since he came back. The um, storyline spilled over into the rest of the Marvel Universe, which included the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. Um, it was also revealed that Onslaught was uh, came about through a weird crossing of Xavier and Magneto's psyche. That's why Onslaught originally didn't look like this fucking crazy monster <clears throat> and more like a Magneto um, clone, I guess. No, not clone. I don't know. Somebody in a fucking giant like, suit of armor that resembled Magneto's, um, look. Oh, there's Rusty. He want, he he had to come by and say hi. Say hi, Rusty. Okay, lay down. Go away. Lay down. Um, <clears throat> Onslaught had, um, big battles with, um, most of the characters in the Marvel Universe. I actually read somewhere recently, I was kind of, like, Googling some information about the Onslaught storyline, looked at some other videos, and uh, somewhere I f found out that um, this crossover encompassed over 90 issues of Marvel Universe comics at the time, which is fucking crazy. You know, I'm only going through like what, eight or nine issues? I don't, I don't know. So it's kind of crazy that it went so wide throughout the Marvel Universe. It's something that Marvel will do later um, in their publication history. To the detriment of uh, storytelling, I would think, which kind of lost me as a reader eventually. Um, I'll get into that later in a different video. Um, hi, Rusty. So, um, Onslaught created, uh, well, took control of a large fleet of Sentinels. They attacked New York. Um, Xavier was eventually separated from Onslaught, and they thought that was going to be the end of it, but it just made him even more crazy powerful. So, he has the powers of. Xavier, Magneto, and then he's also uh, took captive, uh, you can see Franklin Richards here of the Fantastic Four, has his crazy reality-altering powers, um, and then he also kidnapped X-Man, Nate Gray, from the Age of Apocalypse, because he's insanely powerful as well. Um, so, um, when we lo the last issue we looked at was in an issue of X-Men, where Professor Xavier, who has no powers, he's like all feeling guilt-ridden. And um, he was with uh, all the heroes, but then he decided to leave and go confront Onslaught on his own. Trying to like fucking convince him to stop all the stuff he's doing. Like, yeah, that's not going to work, Charles. Um, the X-Men knew about it, and so in secret, I don't know why, maybe they thought the rest of the Avengers and Fantastic Four and all the heroes would try to stop them. But the X-Men went to try to rescue... Professor Xavier. So the X-Men took off first. Um, so that leads us here to this. Um, I was always curious, is it Marvel Universe Onslaught or is it Onslaught Marvel Universe? I'm pretty sure it's Onslaught Marvel Universe. So you can see this cover. It's a um, double splash page spread cover, um, which also mirrors the Onslaught X-Men issue, which kind of really kicked things off. Um, you can see here the similarities, um, the two different variations of Onslaught, the, the fonts and the titles. You got Wolverine hanging on here, but here it's like Hulk in his place. And then you got like all the, you know, fucking Iron Man. And I guess that's Wasp and it has to be with the fucking hair. Um, and Mr. Fantastic trying to uh, rescue Franklin there. Then on the back, um, instead of Captain, instead of Bishop here shooting at onslaught as you can see it's captain america throwing his shield 
Um, you got Storm coming in. You got Thor coming in for her. You got Camp Move. You got Cannonball up here. Um, Human Torch there. Um, you can see Submariner Na Namor, Namor um, trying to rescue X Men there. Cyclops shooting up there um, with the rest of the X Men down here. You got Hawkeye shooting up here with all these other heroes. Thing, Doctor Doom, Black Panther. So kind of a cool um, replica of it. So it's the same kind of deal. Um, but everyone's just fucking up, trying to fight Onslaught. Um, 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 yeah, never mind. I was going to talk about the differences in Onslaught here, but I'm going to do, I think, a recap and finale episode where I talk about my overall thoughts of the Onslaught storyline. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that more in another video. Um, hi, Rusty. Are we, what are we, what are we doing here? Huh? Do you need some screen time? Uh, all right. Now, okay. This dumb cat. He's so dumb. He's like meows and meows at me like he needs food, right? And his food is in my basement, kind of at the bottom of the stairs, on this pedestal so my damn dogs don't eat it. And he meows at me every time like he needs food. Oh. Oh. Um, but then, like, he has food. But he needs me to, like, walk him to it to, like, show him that it's okay to eat? I don't know. It's kind of adorable and kind of... Uh, goddamn frustrating. Okay, Rusty. Thank you. You made your appearance. Now, you're... You can fuck off now, okay? Oh, okay. Move out of the way. See you later. Um, his tail. All right. So let's get into the comic. Um, yeah, Onslaught Marvel, it says down here, so... Oh, with great power comes what? I don't know. What do you think, Rusty? Um, Scott Libdell, Mark Wade do the plot. Mark Wade does the script. Adam Kubert, with an assist from Joe Bennett, does the pencils or the art. Uh, Dan Green, um, with assist from Art T-Bear, Tim Townsend, and Jesse Delperdang. Delperdang does the inks. Plus some guys, Steve Bucciletto, colorist. Steve Bucci does the enhancement on the colors. And Richard Starkings and Conocraft do lettering. Cool. And then an editor-in-chief who gives a fuck about that. So we got Uatu the Watcher. And um, he's been hanging out, um, taking note of everything. He's been uh, chit-chatting with Apocalypse. He's been in the storyline. And now he's, I guess, talking to us. I am the Watcher, Chronicles of History. For countless eons, it has been my task to observe the shining blue orb men call the Earth. Cool. To chronicle the grand ascension of the human race, the splendor of its achievements, and its the glory of its heroes. So, like, I get to watch Earth. I get to see all the crazy shit they do with its heroes and everything. Um, my job is done. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look at the art. Like, this is Adam Kubert. I've talked about him quite a bit um, here in my videos. Um, he has a... Distinct, I really like him. Him and Andy, um, I like Adam a little bit more. Um, they both can do some weird, crazy proportions. Are they trying to outdo each other sometimes? Um, but, I mean, the Watcher is supposed to be this guy with his big head. Um, he looks like, uh, I mean, you see those uh, episodes of Beavis and Butthead where they look like the Watcher? Those are funny. Um, but this is this is... It's a cool image of the Watcher, kind of unique. Um, I like all the, the the shading under the noses and all up on the head and up under the chin there. It's all well and good. Uh, see, people can't see it if you get in the way. Okay, go away, Rusty. Um, so he's showing, like, um, you know, all this um, devastation. and my, my job is done. Um because New York has basically been fucked up like it always is. Like, you got to put everything in New York. Poor city. Um, look, this moon. That's weird. I'm sure they just added that in there later, right? And then he goes off to say, it was a, I was witness to a un, unique wonderment, a span of time when blah, blah, blah. Um, an era in which the measure of a hero's god gauged not by his power, but by his nobility, by his strength and his heart, blah, blah, blah. It was an age unlike any other, and this is the story of its end. But is it really? 
No, this is just a fucking footnote in the Marvel history. I mean, I understand you can't just, like, edit. You can't end the fucking Marvel Universe on something like this. It's going to go, and, like, they're going to have to think of other threats that are bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and it just, um, I guess... But for us at the time, this was this was a pretty big deal. So you got um, Onslaught in his fucking crazy form, and he's talking with uh, uh, Charles Xavier down here, and it just uh, gives... Again, a recap. The Watcher is talking about Onslaught and everything he's done, where he came from, and what he's doing, why he's doing it. And it, it got to a point where he wanted to create the Age of Apocalypse world, where mutants were just in charge of everything. You know, that's kind of a Magneto ideal. Um, but when he saw, he, he looked in the mind of X-Men, Nate Gray, even though he had other people from that reality that he could do it with, he saw what was going on and how mutants were fighting against each other so much. And they basically destroyed that world in one form or another. And so now he's fucking pissed. He's like, he doesn't want, he, and he might, I think he says it down here, but he basically wants to lay waste to everybody now. He's like, I don't give a fuck about mutants anymore because they're just going to ruin everything. So, um, Everything is like going according to plan. Everything, only one thing sort of his way, Xavier yourself, but he doesn't have any powers. So, Xavier is still just like talking shit to Onslaught, even though, you know, he can't do shit about it. Um, and he says, you are not my equal. You are not unstoppable. You're both a piece of shit. You don't have any humanity. That will be your downfall. I, I rather doubt that, Charles. Yeah, I kind of doubt that too, Charles. I think it probably has to do with uh, probably you know, plot armor and stuff that the Marvel Universe has. Uh, you see how fucking huge he is as he's hunching down over him. Uh, he says, I have no use for humanity in any of its forms, especially, especially not that mutant race you coddle and protect. So, um, we'll turn this over um, to this side because you can see Onslaught gets uh, um, bitch slapped by multiple powers and Rogue comes in flying she grabs the professor Rogue what are you doing here riding shotgun what the fuck does that mean yeah, whatever so uh, the X-Men are here and they're gonna like take one final shot at Apocalypse Apocalypse Onslaught Jesus Christ uh, you ready Cyclops and willing X-Men on my signal Gene you and Storm hit him high Gambit and Bishop you take him low Cable and Wolverine Hit them hard. And me and uh, boring as fuck Joseph and Rogue, we're going to go um, have tea time, I guess. These guys, what are they going to do? But whatever. Boring as fuck Joseph says, as of now, the onslaught is finished. Cool uh, double page spread. Um, you got to go sideways, I guess. I mean, Adam Cooper does this a bunch where he feels like, oh, I got to draw it this way. Um, it's fine. Um... So, uh, yeah, Cable's there. Um, uh, Stupid Wolverine is there. And they uh, they start fighting, but uh, Onslaught uses his um, uh, magnetic powers that he has from Magneto um, and uproots the Earth. And so the X-Men are fighting, and Professor Xavier is watching, and he's basically saying, like, oh, he's so proud of them. You know, this may be their last day. As he looked from the sidelines, he could never be more prouder because it's possibly their last. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. But it's just in these like little tiny panels that they're doing anything. Um, and then, um, but then they get fucked up because Onslaught is just too powerful. And then this is kind of a cool moment. I like this. Silence filled the air. All was lost. And yet through the haze of the dust, Xavier sensed a coming. Um, he doesn't have his powers, but you could just, you know through like the smoke and the clouds you see Captain America's shield there you see the fist of thing and Thor's hammer um invisible girl's one invisible woman's boobs um and Iron Man's helmet there just kind of brief moments of like the best parts of them if you know what I mean and bam there's the Avengers and Fantastic Four and a few others 
And it says here, since the coming of hope, of courage, of marvels. So, um, it's a, always a funny picture of Captain America right there. He's like, he looks like a fucking old man. Like, uh, what's that fucking Jeff Dunno? That fucking comedian with the goddamn puppets. He has this old man. That's who Captain America looks like right there. You see, you got Doctor Doom here. You got the Hulk. You got Submariner here in the back. You got uh, Black Panther. Like, these guys came out of nowhere. They were never around. I think this is Crystal from the Inhumans. Um, she had not been around doing shit. Um, Black Widow. She was never in any uh, of the other issues that I was uh, looking at. Was she? I don't think so. Um, it's kind of interesting seeing Captain America and helping Cyclops there since, like, they were the main opposition forces in the Avengers vs. X-Men storyline, which we'll look at at some point. So, um, so they're here. We're going to do something. Avengers, Fantastic Four, and everyone else. We're Earth's last line of defense, people. Win or lose, we go out together. Um, you, know, you always got to draw a Black Widow like that, right? In that pose with her ass looking at you. Um, took the opportunity right there a little bit too. Um, but that onslaught just shoots at them. Kind of weird coloring and panel, but you see them scattering in the, in, in the bottom there. So the fight's on. And Joseph, boring as fuck Joseph, gets hit automatically by debris. So he's knocked out. And Xavier, since, you know, Magneto and Xavier are friends, he's like, Joseph! And he's knocked the fuck out. So the fight's going on. Um energy blasts and everything are going back and forth and uh, you see in these bottom three panels is uh, the silhouette of Xavier pulling Joseph to safety so he's got him here and they're talking about how much they love each other and Xavier's just jealous of his fucking long luscious locks because he's bald and the only hair he has are his fucking goddamn eyebrows uh, he's like, we need our the strength of our friendship to, to win this day. Yeah, that's still not going to do it either. Um, and then we go to a different artist from Adam Kubert. Who is it? Joe Bennett. Not really too familiar with him. I mean, the name sounds very familiar. So they're like in a weird astral plane or something inside of Onslaught and his psionic being like it, it, it's kind of a weird concept but you know it's comic book so just fucking deal with it um, and there you can see they're trapped they're shackled with this weird energy around their hands so they can't do anything um, and um, you know X-Man is kind of freaking out because he thinks that it's um, the age of apocalypse is going to happen again and it's because of his it's his fault um, and he's like, there's nothing I can do. And Franklin here is like, no, that's not what Xavier told me. He said, we, we couldn't do it alone, but maybe we can do something together because we're special. And he's like, oh, maybe. And so, okay, sorry we're late. You guys charge off on your own. Yeah, maybe you should have said something. Uh, they're Schiller from Onslaught Psionics. Um, they made this armor to protect him from Xavier's power. Um, and, um, he's talking about Gene and Cable can protect the rest who don't have the armor. I mean, what kind of armor do they have? I don't know. Plot armor is what they got. So they're all, like, still banging down on him. Um, earthquakes are happening, but then they look up into the sky, and there's a second sun that appears. Um... It's filling the sky. It'll melt the earth. And like, yeah, that's not going to happen because uh, the gravity will kill us first. Uh, Mr. Fantastic like, that's fucking unbelievable. She's like, yeah, but, you know, just deal with it. Took the opportunity there. Um, you know the rules of the universe. Franklin doesn't know. So um, whatever he thinks can basically make happen. So Cyclops taking charge. He tells Thor and Storm with their elemental powers to um, keep the upheaval, contain the upheaval with their... I just said uh, elemental powers, Jesus. So they're still in here. They're still talking. What do we do? How do we do this? Um, and um, X Man's like, gosh, this little kid, this five year old, is like, like keeping it together better than he can. 
telling him like, "Hey, be strong, be be uh, courageous." And um, they're like, "We're we're special, we're powerful, so maybe we just need to like concentrate, you know." And he does, and they're able to get these like weird psionic shackles off of themselves. So they're they're trying to bust free. And from outside, Cable with his telepathic powers, um, it was able to make contact with um, these two in here, and um, he has this idea. He says, I can tether them psionically, give them a path. To follow out onslaught, but he wants Xavier's help, but Xavier doesn't have any powers. He's like, I get, get Cable's like, yeah, I get that, but I could go inside jo a boring as fuck Joseph's mind and use his magnetism to nudge the electromagnetic barriers in your brain, basically helping him get his powers back for a second. He's like, risk, risk level. He's like, it, yeah, it could fuck us all up. And Xavier's like, no, I forbid this. And boring as fuck Joseph's like, just fucking. Let us do this, okay? So then we got Dr. Doom. And he showed up recently, and he's like, I don't want to fucking rule a world that's just, you know, torched into a ball of cinder. And he's like, Onslaught must be stopped, right? So I'm here, and he's like, I'm fucking smarter than everybody else here, and it's my intellect that's going to save everybody. Um, and Gambit and Black Panther are just like, should we trust him? It's like, who fucking cares? Um, you got Foggy and Karen from Daredevil looking up, and I think this must be Jarvis, and then there's uh, J. Jonah Jameson looking up. Just, you know, human characters, random human characters. So, Doom, he instructs Vision to, um, let's see, phase into Rogue. So Rogue is already fucking strong. She has Ms. Marvel's. Or, Cap, you know, Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel's power. So she's fucking strong and can fly. And it's uh, it's augmented by Vision's uh, psych, uh, phasing into her somehow. So, um, w this is dumb. While Wolverine's pierced Onslaught's field with Berserker Rage. Like, it's not like a power he has. It's, that's just a stupid thing. Like, Wolverine, like, somehow pierces it with his claws. Just to give Wolverine, um, stupid Wolverine, something to do. And Giant Man and Namor held the rift open long enough by punching it, I guess, to allow moments patch. So they like they create a, a a fucking hole for these guys to go into to like get at onslaught. And so they're zooming in, but it just bounces off. And it's like you're no physical match for me. And Reed Richards, he's watching. It's like what the fuck? That should have hurt him a little bit. Why didn't it? And then he starts thinking, like unless. So Scarlet Witch is like holding on to Vision. Gambit's like helping Rogue down there. You know, the lovers at one time or another. Um, and, um, but Doom's plan did kind of work. The force barrier is fading. Because it didn't hurt him, but he had to like, he's forced to relinqu relinquish control. And he's like yelling like a goddamn baby. And it's like, this is our chance to, like, get at him. So Hulk comes up. He's like, send me in. I can take him. But he talks to uh, Jean Grey. Phoenix here took the opportunity. And he says, you need to go and telepathically turn my brain off. Tell, turn Banner off. Shut him down. It's like, what, your human side? He's like, it's the human side is my control side. I need to not be in control. You just got to let the rage out. It's the only way. So she's like, okay. So she does, goes in, she talks about who's Betty. He's like, don't worry, just leave me that. And she talks about um, all the pain that the Hulk has gone through and has had to endure. Endured. And then she starts asking, like, Banner, are, are you there? And he's like, Banner is puny. Hulk is strongest there is. So Hulk, no human side, no control, just fucking rushes at Onslaught. And he's like, Hulk will stall, stop Onslaught. No one beats Hulk. And like the little fucking uh, tail here of the word bubble is pointing at Onslaught. But it's fucking Hulk saying it. So like rage-filled Hulk is going at Onslaught. So while this is going on, everyone else is rushing forward to help somehow. Um, but Reed Richards and um, Sue Storm 
Sue Richards, whatever her name is, Mrs. Fantastic. They're just talking about, um, oh, we love each other. And we were around, we were the first, Fantastic Four was the first, um, so what if this is the end? And uh, don't say that, you know, we'll make it through. This world will go on for our son. Um, so they're just having kind of a moment there. Um, every blow unleashed by the Jade Giant, this is the Watcher talking, unfettered more of Onslaught's might. And so they start pooling their powers, helping each other. You know, you see uh, Morning's Fuck Joseph um, helping Iron Man with his metallic armor. Um, Quicksilver in Vision says, putting aside old rivalries, I guess they don't like each other. They're holding on. Uh, rekindling old feelings. You have Crystal from the Inhumans and Johnny Storm. Even though I think she's married to Quicksilver here. Man, mutant, or god. Nothing would stand in their path. That's a weird muscle right there with the anatomy. Right? Could I do better? Maybe. I might look at some more reference. But maybe they didn't have time. It's fine. Uh, forward they strode, blah, blah, blah. So it goes back to Adam Kubert's art here. And uh, you see it's uh, you see from the perspective of Captain America, he's looking to his left to see his Namor, Human Torch going forward, looking to his right, these Avengers going, and then he looks up, he sees Falcon, stupid Red Wing, um, flying above him. They're comforted by the knowledge that there's no better way to go than beside old friends. So, yeah, Cap, he's, he's proud and he's happy to be with his family. I mean, his friends. Um, so then it goes back to the Hulk and Onslaught, and they're just beating the fuck out of each other. Boom. Big, big um, punch there. Punch to the Hulk there. You can see how, like, strong Onslaught is. And then he, like, pat, like, hits him right there pretty bad. And there you see uh, you got fucking uh, Stan Lee <laughs> as a postal worker. Step aside, youngster. Neither sleep nor hail nor shut the fuck up. Um, and then, um, so Onslaught has him pinned down, um, and he's like, oh, I'm going to take out everybody, humans and mutants. Have I forgotten anyone? He's like, just the Hulk makes him mad. The matter Hulk gets the stronger Hulk gets and Hulk is angry. And he just unleashes all his anger into this one punch. And it just like sends out a shockwave wound throughout the city. Like just the force sounded like a nuclear blast. They say. Um, and then the dust settles and clears, and they see the Hulk, his, like, lifeless body right there. But they also see another body next to him, a human body, and it's Bruce Banner and the Hulk. They're separated. And somehow Gambit figures this out. Don't know, mon ami. Maybe Hulk pounded the reality changing powers out of Onslaught. So, that's what happened. Like, because of whatever Franklin Richards, um reality altering powers I guess has that somehow separated the two then they look over at Onslaught's armor and it's cracked and beaten and empty um Hulk Hulk did it they won they feel like they they like Onslaught is no more good job Hulk but no hardly um now Onslaught is just this weird energy this weird psionic energy You're talking about um that the the he's no longer a physical force the sh, the armor is just a shell and now he's it doesn't have a physical form that can be hit or bludgeoned into submission he says so he's just this like raw energy is basically his final form that's what reed richards says down here um he's only a shell now he's pure sonic energy yeah i just said that and it's like now we can't how do we beat him like we have no way to attack him so Thor comes like swooping in, right? And he says, if you need a vessel to hold him, then use mine. Like I will go into him and I will use my body as a physical vessel for this energy. And once I do that, you must show me no mercy. Only by felling me can you fell Onslaught. So you have to, like once I go in, you have to attack um or, yeah, you have to attack while you have the chance. And he starts saying, for Midgard, for Odin, for Asgard! And it's, and it's hurting him. It's not quite working. Um, Onslaught's tearing his body from 
apart from within. He's like, Thor can't carry him alone. Just Thor being in there can't do it. So, um, things, Johnny Storm, they say Flame On, like, okay, if they need more bodies, let's go. And so they jump in too. So you can see where this is going. Um... So these guys are in here, and like Onslaught is like, "What are you doing? You're draining me!" And then they're starting this. They're saying it's like it's starting to work. Um, Hank Pym is there, and he's talking to Janet. She looks fucking weird. She looks like a goddamn bug in her face. And he's like, "Okay, let's go." Um, he's talking about their relationship. And then the Avengers go go in, and uh, Falcon's like. You know, this will be like our last thing we ever do. And Captain America's like, doesn't matter. Don't confuse me. Avengers assemble. So um, Falcon, Namor, Captain America, um, Scarlet Witch, Black Panther join in with Thor, Thing, Human Torch. The Avengers and Fantastic Four are like just sacrificing themselves. So Hank Pym goes in there and he's like talking about how lonely he is, how much his life sucks. But the Wasp comes in like, hey, we're a team and so we're going to do this together. So, okay, cool. So they jump in and um, the, the rest are getting ready to go in, right? And they're like, Iron Man, be ready to. And they're like, Iron Man, what are you doing? And he's looking around. He's like, has anyone seen Doom? Um, so inside... Um, Nate and Franklin, they are still trying to find a way to escape. They're hearing Professor Xavier, and they're like, take my hand somehow. And um, Nate Gray doesn't trust Xavier because he knew Xavier was Onslaught, and he doesn't just doesn't trust him, so he doesn't want to go in. So there's like, just like, don't give in to that, whatever. Just take my hand, find the strength and courage. So, Wolverine, Quicksilver, and um, uh, Crystal here, they're about ready to dive in too. But Reed Richards stops them. He's like, no, 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 no. You guys cannot go. He says, I noticed earlier that Onslaught's essence expanded with Rogue. When Rogue and Vision hit him, it didn't quite work. And um, Mr. Fantastic started doing the calculations in his head. And he says that can only mean one thing. Since he began life as a mutant... A mutant genetic pattern would give him the perfect means to live again. So if mutants jumped into this weird psionic energy, that's just going to strengthen him. So Wolverine and Quicksilver, being mutants, cannot go. It says Scarlet Witch seemed to be protected by her hex. All right, I guess. What about fucking Namor here? He's a mutant. I guess they didn't know that at the time. But the rest of you don't dare make contact. It's up to us. So, um, Quicksilver is like, okay, um, well, it sucks that I can't, like, join my comrades and do the sacrifice. I'm, like, relieved that, you know, like, m me and my wife are spared. But Crystal's like, god damn, you stupid Quicksilver. You don't never listen. He said mutants can't go in. He didn't say anything about inhumans. And so she kind of hits Quicksilver away and she jumps in before he can react. So he wants to go in there and Wolverine has to restrain him. So that's fucking... Terribly sad. So Doom's over here, and he's like um, thinking about how he can take advantage of this situation. Uh, he's creating a device to siphon some of this energy. Um, and then an arrow comes out of nowhere, and Hawkeye's like, "Oh fuck you! You're you're not getting away with this." And Iron Man comes blasting down, tackles Doom, and he's like, "What is the meaning of this?" He says, "It's called sacrifice, you dumb fuck." So Iron Man, Doctor Doom, and Hawkeye, they all join in right there too. So the only ones that are left are Mr. Fantastic and an Invisible Woman. It's like, that's everyone but us. And so he tells Cyclops, um, whatever happens, don't hold back. The X-Men have to hit Onslaught with everything they have in order to blast him out of existence. Otherwise, what we're, we've done here today will be for nothing. So he's like, okay. So once they jump in, the X-Men just have to, like... Fuck them up as best they can. So, these two were the first, I guess. And now they're going to be the last in this moment. Um, and on your count, they say four, two. Because there was Fantastic Four. Now there's two of them, I guess. And they jump in. So, uh, Cyclops send, like orders the X-Men to attack. So, everyone's just attacking with everything they've got. Um, even um, stupid Wolverine. 
just clawing at it with his bony claws and his stupid mask. Rogue's punching it, I guess. But all the rest are, you know, throwing their cars, throwing energy at it, just hitting it from all, as you know, just bombarding it. They're, you could say they're giving it an onslaught of their powers. <laughs> and um, on the side, you see Hulk and Banner here. And Banner wakes up and he just sees, like, the shell of the Hulk right there. And he doesn't quite know what's going on, but I think he does. And he just joins in the best way he can. And he just kind of, like, lumbers in, stumbles in, I guess. And that kind of is the final dotting the I. And Onslaught explodes. This huge explosion is happening here. Um, and from with from within, Nate and Franklin are still there, and they're like, Onslaught's vanishing. Now it's now or never. So he finally like trusts, um, trusts him. They take their hands and they fall out. Um, and you see like just this burning crater in the middle of Central Park, where what once all the Marvel Universe heroes pretty much were there, the Avengers, Fantastic Four, now all, all that's left is X-Men, is mutants. And that's what the world is seeing. Human witnesses ga gasping in horror. And they're going to pass a terrible and vicious judgment. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, against those they would hold forever responsible for this tragedy. Of a world without heroes. So Rogue catches uh, Nate and Franklin, and he's kind of passed out. And Xavier's like, oh, no, not Nate. Yeah, whatever. But he's fine. And he's like, did we win? And like, I guess it's depend on who you ask. So then um, Xavier's trying to console uh, Franklin Richards here. Um, and he's like, where are my mom and dad? Where's Uncle Ben, Uncle Johnny? Where'd they go? And he's like, they made the most noble of sacrifices. They gave themselves so the world might live live um did I miss something um hold on okay I did miss something on this it kind of says here as humanity humanity's bride has faded from existence mother and son grasp for each other one last time like before she like went into nowhere. And in that moment, time and space froze, reality warped, and perhaps hope was reborn. Reborn, get it? So that's when the humans start seeing that all the fucked up shit that happened. So um, now there's this fucking ball right here out of nowhere that they're kind of focusing on, you know? And uh, he's asking Xavier, he's like, they'll be back one day, right? And he's like, you'll see them again, I promise. In the meantime, if you hold them in the heart, you'll always be with us. But not really. And um, so X-Men and Professor Xavier go up on top of a rooftop and um, they're talking about um, the heroes and the sacrifice they made and how Nate, X-Men here, really didn't get a chance to know them. And he's like, if... There was anybody like the of them, Avengers and Fantastic Four, on my world, maybe it wouldn't have ended up the way it did. And it would have been a better place. And he's like, I know they made a difference here. So, cuts back to uh, Watcher, and he's chit-chatting with Apocalypse, because he's around for some reason. And he's like, cool, a tale of survivors, of uh, the fittest surviving, my favorite kind, but there's another age dying, dawning, an age of apocalypse. Yeah, you say that all the time, apocalypse, and it never quite happens, right? Um, and he says, mark my words, with the arena cleared of defenders and heroes, that age will be upon us soon. Yeah, no, nah, not really. Perhaps, or perhaps a different day is at hand, apocalypse, a day of new possibilities of heroes rediscovered and heroes reborn. The champions of mortal, of Earth are, but... Mortal men, their passing, however tragic, is inevitable. But their legacy will endure, so long as their memory is not forgotten. 
And so the saga continues in The Heroes Reborn, Fantastic Four, Captain America, Iron Man Avengers by um, Jim Lee and Silly Rob Liefeld and Wills Portacio. Um, and that's the end of the, the comic. So, um, kind of cool, um, big battle, um, I guess ultimately a fitting way for the story to end. Uh, is it everything you'd hoped it would be? I don't know. But it, it, it was what it was. So, um, I think I might do another video, um, that is kind of a prologue of this, of a couple of issues of X-Men showing the, um, the fallout of what happened here. And, um, I'm, I think I'm also going to do another video that just recaps everything, gives my final thoughts on this big, long, epic saga of Onslaught. So stay tuned for that coming real soon. So, um, thank you for, uh... Staying here to the end, as always, hit that like button if you could. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.